All right, so what I want to do here is just shift the lens a bit and look at the shared responsibility model if we were just uh, ob observing a subset of cloud services such as compute. And so we're going to see infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, software as a service, and now we have function as a service. And so that's what I mean when we shift the lens, we get new information. Uh, and so you can just see that you really don't want to look at this uh, from one perspective, okay? So starting at the top here, we have bare metal. Uh, and so AWS is offering is called the EC2 bare metal instance. And this is where you basically get the whole machine. Uh, you can configure the entire machine with, with the exception of the physical machine itself. So as a customer, you can install the host OS, um, uh, the host OS. So the operating system that runs on the physical machine, and then you can install your own hypervisor. Um, and then AWS is going to be responsible for the rest, the physical machine. Now, normally the next step up would be dedicated, but dedicated doesn't exactly give you more responsibility. It gives you more assurance because it's a single tenant uh, virtual machine. And that's why I kind of left it out here, uh, but we'll see it in the next slide that it is kind of on the model and shares the same spot as uh, EC2. Um, but EC2 is a virtual machine. And so um, here the customer is responsible for the guest OS. So that means that you can choose what OS you want, whether it is Ubuntu or Debian or Windows, but that's not the actual OS that is running on the physical machine. And so you're not gonna have control of that. AWS is going to take care of that. Then there's the container runtime. So you know you, you can install Docker on this or any kind of container layer that you want. Um, so that's a, another thing that you can do. So AWS is gonna be responsible for the hypervisor, uh, the physical machine and the host OS, all right? Then looking at containers, AWS has more than one offering for containers, but we'll just look at ECS here. And so um, this is where you are going to uh, have, uh, you, don't, you don't install the guest OS, right? The guest OS is already there for you. What you are going to do is choose your configuration of containers. You're going to uh, deploy your containers. You're going to determine where you need to access storage for your containers or attach storage to your containers. And AWS is gonna be responsible for the guest OS, it, it, the, and there might not even be a guest OS, but there, the host OS, the, the guest OS, the hypervisor, the container runtime, uh, and you're just responsible for your containers, okay? Then going to the next level here, we have platform as a service. And so this one also is a little bit odd where it fits um, because the thing is, is that this could be using anything underneath. It could be using containers. It could be using virtual machines. Um, and so that's where it doesn't exactly fit well on a linear graph, but let's just take a look at some things here. So this is where you're just uploading your code. Uh, you have some configuration of the environment. You have options of deployment strategies, um, the configuration of the associated services, and then AWS is gonna be responsible for the servers, the OS, the networking, the storage, the security. So it is taking on more responsibility than infrastructure as a service, um, uh, whereas, you know, AWS is just gonna be responsible for that. So if it's a virtual machine that it's been under uh, under the use, then AWS is gonna be responsible for this customer stuff. Okay, you're not. If it's containers, then AWS is gonna be responsible for this, but it just depends on how that platform as a service is set up. Actually, the way Elastic Beanstalk is set up is that you actually have access to all that infrastructure and you can fiddle with it. And so in that case, uh, whereas like if you were to use Heroku, which is a, a, a third-party provider, um, you know they would take care of all this stuff up here um, and so you would not have to worry about it, but on AWS, you actually are responsible for uh, the underlying infrastructure because you can you can configure it, you can touch it. So that's where, you know, again, these do not fit perfectly and you can't look at platform as a service, meaning that um, you're not responsible for certain things. It really comes down to the service offering, okay? Then we're taking a look at software as a service. So on AWS, um, this is gonna be something like um, Amazon WorkDocs, which is, I believe, a competitor uh, not a very popular competitor, but a competitor to Microsoft SharePoint. And so this is for content collaboration. So as the customer, you're responsible for the contents of the document, management of the files, configuration of sharing access controls, and the database is responsible for the servers, the OS networking, the, the storage, the security, and everything else. So, you know, if you use a Microsoft Word doc and you type stuff in it, you say where to save it, that's what you're responsible for, okay? The last one here on the list is our uh, functions here. And so AWS's offer is AWS Lambda. And so as the customer, all you're doing is you're uploading your code and AWS is gonna take care of the rest. So deployment, container runtime, networking, storage, security, physical machine, basically everything. Um, and so you're really just left to uh, develop, okay? So, 
you know, hopefully that gives you kind of an idea. And again, you know, we could have thrown in a few other services, like what we could not fit on this slide here was, um, uh, it was Fargate, which is a serverless container as a function, or sorry, serverless, uh, serverless container as a service or container as a service. So, uh, you know, that has its own unique properties in the model as well, okay? So let's just have kind of a visualization on a linear graph here. So we have the customer's responsibility on the left-hand side and AWS's responsibility on the right. And we'll look at our broad category. So we got bare metal, dedicated virtual machines, containers, and functions. And so no matter uh, which uh, type of compute you're using, you're always responsible for your code. For um, containers, you know, if, uh, you know, like uh, the functions, when you're using functions, there are pre-built containers. So you'd say, I want to use Ruby and there's a Ruby container and you don't have to configure it. But obviously, um, you know, when you're using container service, you are configuring that container, you are responsible for it. For um, virtual machines, you know, you're responsible for the runtime. So you can install a container runtime on there or install a bunch of different packages like Ruby and stuff like that. Uh, the operating system you have control over in the virtual machines for the dedicated. And we saw with bare metal, you have both uh, controls of the host OS and the guest OS. And then only bare metal allows you to have control of the virtualization where you can install that hypervisor. So hopefully that gives you an idea of compute and AWS is offering there. And also kind of how there's a lot of little caveats when we're looking at the shared responsibility model, okay?